Hey, what's up guys? Dave here from CNC 3D. So today we're gonna to be going through how to use our new Nighthawk controller. For those of you that don't know, we've been working on our Nighthawk controller for about the last two years, and we're really proud and excited to bring some of its awesome features into the CNC marketplace. So as you can see, we've just got an easel job here. This is a couple of our Queen Bee rail guide mounts that we send out with our Queen Bee upgrade kits. Today we're going to be loading this job onto our Nighthawk production machine that we have out here in our factory, which has one of our Nighthawk controllers fitted to it. And we're going to be exporting this job out of Easel in order to be able to do that. So just a couple of things with regards to Easel. So Easel have recently made some changes to the way that their Easel driver works. And we have acknowledged that if you do get Easel to control your jobs on your machine, that it can actually change some of the settings on there when you go through the mandatory configuration wizard. As a workaround for this, we definitely recommend exporting jobs out of Easel. So we're gonna take a look at doing that first and then we're gonna be uploading this job to our Nighthawk controller. So the first thing that we will do, we do have our Queen Bee mount brackets already ready to go here. So we are ready to export. We're gonna have a look at the top here where it has the name of our project. At the moment, it's just called 2 by QB Mounts. We're gonna click on that. And we're gonna specify some information to make it easier for us to be able to run this job off our Nighthawk machine when we get there. So we're gonna add a hyphen after the actual name of the project, and we're gonna put in the end mill diameter, so 3.175 millimeters. And we're gonna put the type of end mill in there. So it's a one flute up cut for plastic. And we'll do another hyphen and we're gonna put in HDPE. And we know that it is 12.5 mil thick. So we'll put that in there and hit rename. Now what we'll do is we're just gonna go ahead and export this at this point in time. So to do that's very easy. We'll go up the top to machine and then we'll go to advanced down the bottom here. We'll click on generate G code and then we'll click on export G code and we'll save this file. So that's now completed. We now have two options for communicating with our Nighthawk CNC. We already have our Nighthawk controller connected up to our CNC 3D internal Wi-Fi network. So we will take a quick look at some of those features as well. So let's go to our CNC 3D commander software and we're going to change our machine type to IP. And we've already got the IP address for this machine pre-saved in our settings. Please note we do have a colon and then 23 at the end. That is because port 23 has been allocated as the uh, communications port for communicating to the Nighthawk controller. That is a default value. You do need to make sure that you do put this port number in there in order for it to communicate. And then we'll just click on the connect button. And as you can see, it's connected up to our Nighthawk CNC version 2.1. It's pulled all of our jobs that we currently have saved on here. Now our CNC 3D Commander software works extremely well and is optimized for our Nighthawk controller, but it will also work with other ESP32 based controllers on the market, such as the X-Pro V5 and a couple of other variants that we're starting to see come out now. So one of the handiest features while we are here as well is we're gonna go over to this connections tab at the very end now that we're connected to it. As you can see in green, we can see the details of our network and the IP address that's assigned to it. You can actually choose to edit the settings and configuration of your ESP32 based controller or Nighthawk controller very easily. For the first section, we have the wireless connectivity option where you can choose between disabling all wireless communications, connecting directly to an existing network, choosing to connect directly to your controller, or you can choose to enable the Bluetooth function. So we have already pre-configured the Nighthawk controller here to be on our existing network. By default, your Nighthawk controller will come in direct access point mode so that you can access the settings um, very quickly just by connecting directly to it. 
Um, so we'll keep these settings the same, but let's have a closer look at some of the other options that we do have. So under the wireless settings heading here, we've obviously got the host name of our machine. We then have the Wi-Fi access point settings and the Wi-Fi station settings. Now the access point settings specifically refer to the settings that are in the controller when you are in direct access point mode and the station settings directly relate to when you connect to an existing Wi-Fi network. So what you can do at this point in time is you can choose to assign the IP addresses for both types of connection if you wish. And you can also choose whether or not you wish for the station settings to be in DHCP, which, which means it will automatically assign an IP address or in static mode. Now we do prefer static mode because it means we can always find the device on our network because its IP address will not change. So that pretty much covers some of the features in there. We'll take a look at the protocol settings section. In this section, we've got our HTTP access, which is our web UI access interface. You can choose to disable this, or you can choose to change the port. You then have your direct access, which is for programs such as Commander, which can connect directly to the system. And you can choose to disable this function and also change this port if you wish. So by default, these values are 80, which is a standard web access port, and 23, which is a standard Telnet port that the controller communicates with. So let's, let's assume that you have changed some of your settings. All you need to do is just hit update connection settings and then make sure you go through and power cycle your Nighthawk after it advises you that it has completed that process. So let's go back to our run job tab. As you can see, we've got a list of all of our files that has pulled off the SD card. If we wish to upload a file to it at this point in time, you just have to go across here to upload job and then we'll navigate to our downloads folder and we can see that there is our job that we have saved in there. So let's just go open on that and we can see it's uploading. It's successfully uploaded to the actual system. And if we have a look in this list now, we should be able to find our job. There it is there, two by QB mounts. So that is perfect. We're just going to practice deleting this job so just select the job that you wish to remove and hit delete job. That will refresh the list. And as you can see, it has removed that off the SD card that is stored on the Nighthawk controller. So we'll disconnect from our commander software now and let's take a closer look at the web UI. For those of you that may have a Mac or wish to do something else, um, we'll go 192.168.20.155. Whoops, 192.168.20.155. And now we are on our web interface here for the Nighthawk. So this has standard navigation features on the left-hand side here. You can obviously jog this machine. Um, you can choose to change the speed that it travels at. It gives you a controller status at the bottom. You've got your typical emergency stop here, which will reset the controller in the event of something going wrong. And as you can see, we've got an SD file section in the center here. If we just hit refresh, this will refresh all of the files that we currently have saved on the SD card. So in order to upload a file using the web UI, we just have to hit upload. And then we're going to choose our file again here and go open. And that pretty much covers how you can choose to upload files directly to your Nighthawk. So you can choose to either use the web UI interface or you can choose to use our CNC 3D Commander software. Either way will work perfectly fine for you. So it does come down to your personal preference. Uh, our CNC 3D Commander software does have a bit more functionality than your standard uh, web UI will. Um, you can also obviously choose to configure your settings much the same way that you can using our commander software. So we'll just click on settings and you can see that we've got pretty much the same settings that we had in our commander software for you to easily be able to change the details, the connection type, etc. So it is up to you with the settings that you want to actually use. So you can choose to change between DHCP or static, enter in the details on there, 
and you can even choose to do your connection type on there. So between none, Bluetooth, access point or client station. Um, you can then go in and configure some of the standard variables in here as well. It's not as intuitive as using Commander, but it will still give you a good spot for you to be able to change your settings effectively. So once you're happy with that, you can pretty much just hit the refresh button on here. And that of course will refresh all of your settings. If you do make any changes here, just make sure to hit the set button next to each value in order to send that command. So that pretty much covers the setting part of the Nighthawk CNC. We'll just go back to our dashboard here and we are pretty much good to go. So what we'll do now is we're gonna go over to our Nighthawk Pro CNC machine and we're basically going to run through this job that we've just created and we'll show you how to do that using the web UI. So let's go do that now. All right guys, so here we are in front of our Nighthawk Pro CNC and today we're gonna to be cutting out this job that we've just uploaded earlier out of some 12 mil HDPE. It's approximately 12.5 mil, so we made our depth 12.7 just to make sure we get a nice clean cut through our material. We have used our blue painters tape and super glue method for holding this one down. So we're not gonna be cutting any tabs out of these jobs. So we should have a nice clean part that we can just remove. So the first thing that we need to do, we're gonna connect up to the Nighthawk controller, which you can see down the bottom corner here. And we're gonna be using a phone to do this. So let's put an IP address in here, 192.168.20. Dot one five five, and there we go. We are now connected up to the main web interface on the Nighthawk. So the first thing that we will do is just raise our Z, and let's increase our speed a little bit here to five thousand millimeters per minute, and we can now jog our y-axis to move this forward to where we want the job to start from let's do 100 mil and let's do 10 mil and let's lower our z down 10 mil now Okay, and so we're looking like we're in a pretty good spot to start this. I might just do another 10 mil there. Let's just go another 10 mil down on Z. Okay, so what we'll do now, we're gonna get our bit of paper underneath here and complete the lowering process. Let's go one mil on here because we're pretty close. Might just nudge this forward again, 10 mil. Okay, that's looking pretty good just there. So let's now get our Z down, one mil. Feeling pretty close, let's go 0 0.1, 0 0.1. All right, we're feeling like we're pretty much on that surface. Let's just pull our paper out of here now and we'll just do another 0 0.1, perfect. Okay, the next step is we're just gonna turn on our spindle now and let's fit off our dust shoe and we can get ready to run this job. Alright, now the next important step here to remember is we have to make sure that we definitely zero out our job. So we'll zoom in here and you've got the zero job button. Let's just hit that. And as you can see, our job zero is now done. We'll scroll down to here and we'll hit refresh. And there is all of our jobs here in this list. 
So the one that we want to run is our QB mount. And so what we'll do is we're just going to hit the little play button right next to our job and we're good to go. Look, there you have it guys. We've just gone through and run this beautiful HDPE job here today. I'm just going to move this out of the way. Let's increase the speed on our Z slightly to 1000. And let's get it up and out of the way. Alrighty. And let's have a closer look at our job. And there you have it guys, we've got our beautiful HDPE pieces here. We're just going to peel the rest of this tape off, some of the bits that lifted up off the bottom. Let's give that a quick clean down. And there you have it guys. The Nighthawk controller on the Nighthawk Pro CNC hammering through some 12.7mm HDPE. Looking great. I hope this has been helpful for you guys today and we'll catch up soon.